Today, we go over how to calculate your post spacing, post width, and post depth when installing your iron or aluminum driveway gate. Hey everyone, Jason from Iron Fence Shop. When installing a driveway gate, there are a few calculations you'll want to know in order to make sure your driveway gate is going to fit properly between your posts. Luckily, they're all pretty simple and straightforward. So today, I wanted to go over the calculations you'll need to know in order to come up with your driveway gate post spacing, post hole width, and post hole depth. One thing to note is that this applies to both our Stronghold iron and infinity aluminum gates. Unlike the fence panels that differ, installing an aluminum or iron driveway gate follows the same steps. There are going to be three different calculations for determining our post hole spacing or how far apart the posts will go. These three will help you calculate and check your post spacing along the way. There will be one calculation to come up with your post hole width and one calculation for getting your post hole depth. So in total, we'll be looking at five calculations or equations. Before we jump to the calculations, we need three key pieces of information to do the required math. One, the width of your gate. Two, the size of your posts. And three, the width of your hinge and latch gaps. The one number you may not be sure of is the width of your hinge and latch gaps. 99% of our driveway gates will use one of our J-bolt style hinges and supply latches. For those, you'll want to use 8.5 inches for a double gate and 4.5 inches for a single gate. Be aware those are adjustable, but we like using those numbers because it leaves you some adjustment room on your latch and hinges. If you're using something other than our J-bolt hinges or standard latch offerings, be sure to consult your install guide or with us via phone or email. Now that you have those three numbers in relation to your gate, let's go over the three different post spacing measurements you can calculate using them. One is the inside to inside of post, two, the center to center of post, three, outside to outside of post. All are useful in a different way. I prefer the center to center of post measurement to get started as it gives me a target right in the center of the post hole to begin digging. So that I can walk you through these calculations, let's use an example gate setup. Let's assume we are working with the following parameters. We're installing a 20 foot wide gate and a six foot arching to seven foot height. We're using a six by six inch square post that is nine foot long, and this is a double gate, so we're gonna use an eight and a half inch calculation for our hinge and latch gaps. We'll use those example parameters to calculate all three of our post hole spacing equations. Let's start with the center to center equation since I like to use that one to start digging my post holes. Center to center post hole equals gate width plus hinge and latch gap plus one of your posts. So for our gate, the equation is 20 foot plus eight and a half inches plus six inches equals 21 foot two and a half inches or 254 and a half inches. Now that we know that number, we can take our tape measure and run it out 21 foot two and a half inches apart to get our center to center post hole point we'll mark and start digging that. The next post spacing calculation is the inside to inside post measurement. This is essentially the open space between the posts you should end up with. To get your inside to inside post measurements, you add together gate leaf plus hinge and latch gap. So for our example gate, let's plug that in. 20 foot plus eight and a half inches equals 20 foot eight and a half inches or 248 and a half inches. So in placing my posts in the holes, there should be that distance clear between them before pouring the concrete. The final post spacing calculation is the outside to outside post measurement. This is the measurement that will take the entire gate system into consideration. Your both posts, your both gate leaves, and your hinges and latches, the whole shebang. To get your outside to outside post measurement, you add together gate leafs plus hinge and latch gap plus both posts. So for our gate, that's gonna be 20 feet plus eight and a half inches plus 12 inches equals a total of 21 foot eight and a half inches or 260 and a half inches. So when placing my posts in the holes, there should be that distance to the outer edge of them before pouring the concrete. Knowing all three of those measurements is helpful when setting the posts. The center to center post measurement will give you your starting point to dig. Once you've started digging the post holes, the between and outside post measurements will help you determine where the posts need to sit in the hole before you pour your concrete. Okay, so now that we know where our post holes are gonna be placed, we now need to determine how wide and how deep of a post hole we need so that we can begin digging. Let's start with the easier of the two to calculate, your post hole diameter. Post hole diameter equals size of post times three. Generally, the rule of thumb is that you want a post hole diameter that is a minimum of three times the size of your post. So let's use our example and do the calculation. Post hole diameter is our six inch post times three equals an 18 inch wide post hole. So for our gate, we will be taking our six inch post and multiplying it by three to get a minimum post hole diameter of 18 inches. 
Keep in mind that is the minimum post hole diameter. You can always go wider. There is really no such thing as too large of a concrete post anchor, but there is such a thing as too small of a concrete post anchor. The wider and heavier your gate leaf, the better it is to go wider for a larger and more rigid post anchor in the ground. This is not the time to scrimp out on concrete. More concrete in the ground means less chance of the post shifting or concrete cracking over time. Now we know how far apart our post holes are and how wide they're going to be, the last number we now need to calculate is how deep the post holes will be. To determine that number, we need to first figure out how much of the post will be above ground. The variable here is the gap between the bottom of your gate frame and the driveway. There is no specific number for that, but generally it's between four to six inches. There are a couple of factors you should consider when determining that gap under your gate. Driveway peak, driveway slope, and snow compaction in winter. First is your driveway peak. Many times your driveway will slope up from each side like this to form a slight peak in the center and allow water to sheet off. If your driveway is peaked like that, make sure your under gate gap is measured from that peak and not the lower side of the driveway. Same thought process if your driveway slopes up towards your house. Even seemingly slight slopes can cause issues if not taken into account. I recommend going from the gate location and back as far as your gate leaf will swing and see how level it is. If you have a 10 foot gate leaf that swings back and the driveway slopes up eight inches over that 10 feet, then you need to make sure that your gap is nine inches minimum and likely taller so that when the gate opens, it clears that driveway slope at the back. Lastly, if you live in an area that gets significant snowfall in the winter, keep that in mind as well. If you get lots of compacted snow and ice that builds up where the gate may go, then you wanna make sure that your gate is tall enough to clear that in the winter time. For our 20 foot wide example gate, we'll assume the driveway is level and that we do get some snowfall in the winter. We'll go with a six inch gap between the bottom of the gate and the ground. To calculate our post hole depth, we need to know the following numbers and equation. Post depth equals total post length minus the combination of gate height at the hinges plus gap under the gate. We're using a nine foot long six by six post and our gate is six foot tall at the hinges with a six inch gap from the gate to ground. Let's plug that into our equation. The post step is gonna equal nine feet minus the combination of six foot plus six inches equals a two foot six inch or 30 inch deep hole. So the post hole depth we wanna aim for is two foot six inches or 30 inches deep. Whether you're digging your post holes manually or using a powered post hole auger, chances are you're not gonna hit your post hole depth exactly. It's best to overdig the hole depth by a few inches past your calculation and use some gravel to fine tune that final depth. If you try and use loose dirt to fine tune the final install, that dirt is gonna compact when the weight of the concrete hits it. By pouring some basic gravel into the post hole and tamping it with a two x four, that will give you a nice solid base and provide some additional drainage at the bottom of the post too. While it might seem daunting and that was a lot of math, it's all pretty basic calculations that will ensure you don't run into any surprises when setting your driveway gate posts. Be sure to check us out here at ironfenceshop.com. Just doing your pre-purchase research before buying a driveway gate? Check out this video going in six questions to ask before buying your driveway gate. If you have any other questions, you can shoot us an email at sales at ironfenceshop.com or give us a call at 800-261-2729. We look forward to hearing from you.